to begin the session. Thank you. Awesome, thanks for that. Hi everybody. Um, I'll start off with a little intro today. Um, my name is Kyle Alec. I am 26 years old and I reside in Sikh territory. Um, I currently live in Penticton, BC, uh, born and raised. Um, been involved in comprehensive community planning for pretty much the majority of my life. My um, my mother, Elaine Alec, was one of the first CCP mentors out there um, and uh, did one of the first kind of pilot uh, communities, Penticton Indian Band. Um, I ended up doing the re, uh, revisioning kind of um, revamp a couple years ago. Um, but I've been kind of involved with planning for 10-ish 10, 10 years, ever since I was in my early teens, um, going to community meetings, taking part, uh, helping note take, helping, helping run um, kind of world cafe type, type sessions back when we were allowed to be in person, which is, which is quite a while ago now. Um, I am a junior planner with a company called Alder Hill Planning. Uh, we do a lot of strategic plans, health plans, health and wellness plans for uh, communities. Uh, Indigenous ran and operated as well. Um, Jesse Hempel, the, the MC of the event, is actually my boss. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I kind of want to just touch base on um, just the last kind of two years going on now of, of COVID and, and kind of what it's done to community engagement and, and how much it's really affected how, how we're able to connect with community. Um, uh, being a planner and, and doing community engagement should be and always done, you know, in person and, and really making those uh, people to people connections and, and really getting a sense of, of, of what people want and what they really need. Um, COVID really, really shook everything up with that. Um, um, yes, when, when COVID really first started, it was, it, it was really hard to kind of find a, find a platform, trying to find out the best way to really still engage and keep the work going because everything was kind of put on a halt. Um, and then Zoom popped up and kind of took everything to a new level. It made everything a lot more convenient. It made everything a lot more accessible for community members. And over the last year and a half, it's really been um, really trying to, to, to optimize it, to make it the most accessible, really trying to make it um, easily accessible, especially for elders and communities, um, communities up north that might not have a lot of accessibility or internet accessibility. Um, and that's been one of the biggest issues in trying to do virtual engagements is they're all that don't have a lot of um, people that, that are able to help them uh, access these meetings or access these sessions. Um, so what I've been doing kind of the last year is really trying to find the best ways to kind of do these engagements, make them fun, make them easy, um, make them super available to everybody. And I've been doing a lot of that with kind of live streaming meetings, uh, live streaming them to Facebook uh, community pages and also uh, copy and pasting. So, so if people aren't able to access um, at least Zoom, they're able to join the Facebook page, um, their community uh, Facebook page and, and at least watch it live on there and still be able to comment and participate with the Zoom session, even though they're not there live. Um, at the same time, also copying, pasting any questions from the Facebook chat and pasting them in Zoom so the facilitator of the live meeting can actually still read those comments. Um, I just want to start off again with a with a really kind of quick icebreaker I do. I'm going to be covering a lot of things. It's going to be a really informal session. So if anyone has any questions at any point, feel free to raise your hand with a reaction or just type in chat and, uh, and I'll address it as soon as I can. Uh, but something I like to do just to kind of ease the mood and kind of get everyone ready into um, into any session I do is really quick icebreakers. Um, this is one I like to do. It's called Zoomed In. Um, we'll be able to kind of see what this is um, as we go through it. But I'm just going to share this here. And what I want to get everybody to do is guess 
you can type in chat. I'll have the chat open for this. Uh, but type in chat uh, what your guesses are of what these objects are. And uh, I'm also going to zoom it out so you'll actually be able to see what they are. So I'll, um, I'll give everybody a few seconds, 30 seconds to kind of put their guesses in the chat. Um, you know, it looks very, it looks very kind of uh, rigid, you know, very kind of, kind of, you know, like brown, earthy color. What do we got in here? We got mushroomed, ripped match head, hair follicle, broken pencil, uh, particle board, sand, tree bark, makeup brush. All right, I think that is it. Broken tree. So, all right, we'll show you what it actually is. There were a couple that are actually pretty close, and it is cinnamon sticks. <laughs> so, uh, a couple people were pretty close. That's awesome. Uh, we'll move on to uh, two more. We have two more that we'll we'll be showing. So I'll give everyone a few seconds to guess what this one is as well. That hat. <laughs> All right, we'll give everyone a few seconds to type in the chat to see what we, uh, what our guesses are. <laughs> yeah, those look like pretty fancy cinnamon sticks in the last one. I haven't seen any ones like that before. <laughs> seconds battery spring clothes pins hair tie this is a very big object um, on this one it's just very zoomed in on one specific part car plane all righty we'll move on. we'll show you what it is plane bike guitar head <laughs> awesome okay we'll move on to the final one really quick this one's relatively easy um but other than that it's only because i know what they are but uh we'll give everyone a few seconds to type in chat what they think this one is and uh we'll move on harp hairbrush Paper in a filing cabinet, hanging, hanging folders. Awesome. Alrighty, we'll show you what the image is. It's a book. <laughs> awesome, everybody. Violin. Perfect. All right, I'll stop sharing that now. Really good guesses. Um, and that's something you can do. That's that's an icebreaker I really like to do. Um, it's it's not a lot. It's not an app. It's not a game. It's something very laid back. Very, um, you can choose to participate if you like. It's not one of those icebreakers where I call upon everybody. Where if there's someone that's shy, um, you know, you put them out of their comfort zone too much, and they and they might kind of shut down a little bit. That's one I like to open up with because it's very voluntary. You can you can have the participants take play or take part that um, want to, and others that just kind of want to watch and enjoy it um, can do that as well. And you can find zoomed in images pretty much anywhere on Google uh, and just screen share it using Zoom. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, that's that's one thing I really like to do. Um, I just want to cover a little bit about uh, Zoom in general. Um, some really good kind of tips to for your settings, running Zoom meetings, if you are running uh, community engagements through Zoom. Um, just a few settings to kind of be aware of. Um, and um, a lot are going to be pretty big. They're just um, they're just things I like to kind of cover. Um, the number one thing that I would recommend for anyone kind of running sessions or community engagements are is definitely having a waiting room enabled. Um, you know, being able to vent through people um, that you do know are participating, people you, that you might not know. Um, it's not as bad anymore with kind of Zoom bombers and, and kind of just trolls in general. Um, but waiting rooms are kind of something good to have. You know, you can kind of start when you want to start. You can open the waiting room and let people in at the exact same time instead of people kind of um, stagger in kind of um, all over the place and kind of interrupting the session. Um, 
so that's one thing I really like to use. Uh, breakout rooms are something that um, I think are just kind of the norm now, uh, something that I think everybody kind of should use. Um, you know, the CCP workshop here right now is using a really, really, really using them amazingly, you know, using each breakout room as a different session, as a different kind of uh, breakout session and, instead of the main kind of forum. Um, I really like doing it because it's it kind of feels like it's a conference, you know, you can kind of drop in and out of any other breakout rooms, seeing what's happening in there, but you'll always have the main room to kind of go and hang out. Um, what is another thing? Recording, recording your sessions is 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 a thing that um, I highly recommend doing. I'll kind of cover it a little bit later, but just always having the recording of your, your community meetings or anything, um, saving them and uploading them to either YouTube or the Facebook page uh, for your community. Um, other key things if you're doing community sessions is really um, maybe getting like a like a, a little bit better of a, a webcam, uh, getting a little bit better of a microphone, uh, because if you will be doing a lot of virtual engagement, a lot of this, a lot of community meetings, um, it, it would be nice to have to have a little bit better sound quality, to have a little bit better um, uh, uh, video if you're if you'll be saving them as recordings as well. Um, and I'm pretty sure that everyone knows how to kind of alter and change the um, microphone setting and speaker settings. Um, yes. So I want to go into live streaming a little bit as well. Um, live streaming uh, is one of the biggest things I've kind of started to utilize over the last, I want to say since about February, I really started using them for pretty much any of my engagements. Um, and it's super easy. It's just um, getting the login information of whatever community page you're working with. Um, that's kind of fun sometimes because, of course, the people that run the page sometimes are a little bit hesitant about giving you the login information. But you do, you, you will be needing that to link to your Zoom account so you can actually live stream to Facebook. Um, all of these settings you're going to need to actually enable on the actual Zoom website. You can't do it through the actual client interface. Um, you'll actually need to go to zoom.us, go into the settings, and enable live streaming. Um, and with that, you just log into Facebook, uh, you open Zoom, and there will be a button that says live stream to Facebook. You start it up. Um, it takes a little while to get booted, but um, I would say it probably doubles the amount of people that you're able to engage with than just hosting um, a Zoom meeting that isn't live streamed. Uh, because normally with community engagements, I'll have about 10 to 15 people per meeting join. Um, but when I do live streaming, there'll usually be about 15 to 20 people on the actual Facebook live stream. So I'll, I'll double the amount of participation I'm able to get. Um, but with live streaming, I, I definitely recommend getting a tech host um, or having someone to be your technical support for these sessions. Um, so you can have someone actually run the live stream, monitor the comments, copy and paste them into the Zoom chat so you can actively see um, the, the Facebook comments in Zoom, um, which really helps because you, you're still involving the participants on Facebook that are watching. Um, and seeing it in real time. Uh, also having a tech host, you're able to focus a lot more on just facilitating, um, not having to worry about uh, muting people, not having to worry about um, any of those other things. Um, it kind of just takes that stress off your shoulders and allows you to kind of do what you need to do, which is leading a conversation um, and, a, and, a, and a topic. Uh, let's see here. So um, I just want to cover a little bit about involving uh, your participants in activities and icebreakers. The first icebreaker I did uh, is called Zoomed In. It's one I really like to do just kind of uh, just to kind of um, ease people into it. Um, I also like to do a lot of um, kind of prize wheels, you know, wheel of names, duck race and everything like that. Um, 
I do want to go into one specific tool, though, uh, and I will share a link for this for everyone to join. It is, it's called Miro. I don't know how many people will hear of that, uh, used Miro or heard of Miro. Um, it's been around for quite a while. It's something that we use every now and then. Um, I will post the link in the chat for everybody. You can join if you want to. Um, you also don't have to, but I will also screen share this as well for everybody. So I dropped a link in the chat. It's to a Miro board. Miro is kind of a virtual whiteboard that you can use for a lot of different things. Um, and I'll actually just share this right now. Perfect. So I'm sharing my screen. Uh, if you click on that link, it'll actually bring you to, um, to my Miro board. Uh, there's nothing super specific on it right now. Um, it's just kind of it's just kind of showing you what you can do. So um, with this one, I'll actually show us here is I like to do these as well. Um, most of the board templates do do them. Um, and in this one, it says, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? And if anyone on this board actually wants to uh, give their input, if you look on the very left of your screen here, you'll have this little bar over on the side. Uh, you can click this, the fourth one down that says sticky note. You can pick what color you want it and you can drag it over to where it says the question, click. It'll drop your sticky note and um, mine would probably be tacos. <laughs> So as soon as you've done that, you can just click off of it and it'll um, release it. Uh, with the sticky notes though, it's uh, one click to activate it, kind of move it around and it's a double click to actually type into it. So you double click it, it'll give you the option to type. Um, if you single click it, you can kind of move it around and drag it. Um, these, these boards are really good because they're a live link. It'll always be active as long as you have it. So if you want um, any input after a session, if you want any specific questions um, answered, you can always put it in and always get have that input after the session. Um, because there are there's always different perspectives. People always process information a little bit differently. And uh, this gives people an option to give their input um, without kind of the stress of giving it during the actual session. Uh, you can also post links to videos um, and they'll always stay there. You can press play at any time. Um, this is an introduction to one of uh, the CCPs done back in probably 2009. So if you're ever having um, like a virtual conference, if you ever have um, any videos to go along with any questions or background information, you can always put this here and it'll always kind of be one hub of kind of everything you need after your session. So I always like to make these for communities um, for people to go participate. And you can always send the link in email, you can send them a link over Facebook and they can jump in at any time. All right, Kyle, just have a quick question in the chat. Is Miro free? Uh, so Miro is, um, Miro is not free. Um, there are trial accounts that you can get for it. Um, but, um, if you are doing a lot of community engagement and if you are, and if you do see yourself utilizing it a lot, I think it's, I think it's $20 a month, um, for for the for the basic account and you get all these tools and you can also share the account with multiple people and have multiple boards so it's not like it's just um kind of one it's kind of a, a shared account that you can have multiple users on um going back um i also like to put uh the agenda for any uh engagement that i am doing or any session that i am doing um on the actual miro board so you can actually see um, when everything will be taking place um, and have that information there as well. And, uh, and going back to uh, recording any sessions and saving them. So if this was a community engagement, if we, if we held um, a virtual meeting and recorded it, I would always save the meeting 
file and um, upload it to the Miro board afterwards. Um, and this is a session we did February 9th, 2021. So it's a two and a half hour session um, and it's all live done. So uh, if anyone missed it, they can always go back um, and watch any of the presentations. So I'll stop sharing that now. And uh, I just want to open it up for any questions at the moment, if anyone has any specific questions they'd want to ask. Not at the moment. OK, awesome. We'll keep moving on. Um, a lot of other tools that I do like to use are, um, you know, door prizes, always having these available, um, making drawing names a little bit more fun and engaging than um, just drawing names out of a hat or anything like that. Making them available, screen shared for everyone to see. So I'm just going to share a couple other tools that I do use. Um, these ones are just name drawing um, tools. And so this one's called Wheel of Names. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen this one. Um, it's just wheelofnames.com. It brings you to here. You get to, you get to put your um, all the participants in this box here. You can also upload, customize your wheel. Um, you do the spin and it draws a name. So I usually end most of my sessions with this, depending on um, what community I'm doing it in. Um, this one's probably the one I like more. It's a lot more engaging. Um, it's, it's a virtual duck race that picks the winner. Um, so you can add the amount of ducks that you want. Uh, you can even add specific names um, and you can also set the timer. So we'll do 15 seconds, um, set, and start. So with this one, super fun. Um, it's it's really cool. Like I like to do these and end the sessions with them. There we go. We have a chat. Okay, so got a question in chat. Uh, what approach do you use in getting consent for filming people and posting online? There may be some community members who want to participate, uh, but not be filmed or photographed. Uh, yeah, so that's one thing. Um, it's, a, it's kind of always with the disclaimer, even at the beginning of this presentation is always, um, always making it aware that you'll be recording the session um, and letting people know that, that you'll be recording it. Also saying if no one does want to participate through video, um, to just turn off their cameras if they don't want their faces on video, um, but the session will be recorded. So if there's anyone that doesn't want um, to be recorded, you, they can always turn off their camera and mute. Um, but that is one of the biggest things. For the most part, a lot of community members don't really mind too much. Um, I, I haven't encountered anyone um, that, that has had an issue with it. Um, because they're just able to mute um, or turn off their camera. Uh, from Bob, uh, do you have to manually enter the names or are they automatically entered based on who is in the session? Uh, so with the wheel of names and with the duck race, you do need to um, manually enter them. Uh, but for the most part, you can usually go into the participant list and uh, copy and paste the names from there. Um, even if you have the breakout rooms open, you can always open the breakout rooms list, copy and paste those. You might have to delete a few things, um, but like um, a few words that aren't the names, but for the most part, that's a lot faster than actually just manually um, typing them out. Um, so a few things I wanna cover as well are just, um, kind of how I do a lot of engagements and the type of um, the type of engagements that I do do. 
Uh, I do a lot of um, planning, a lot of community planning as well. Um, and the way I do that, so I'm just gonna open my window a bit. Um, the way I do a lot of my planning and um, really broadening the amount of engagement that I can get is the work on a large scale. Um, there's always kind of gonna be uh, the groups of people or, or the types of people that don't really get along um, or always kind of butt heads, have different perspectives. <clears throat> I always like to break it up a little bit and having four specific groups um, work on kind of the same sessions. Um, and one minute before the 30 minute. So one thing I really like to do is break people up, break people up into like-minded um, groups and perspectives and, and working on kind of one question from different areas of point of view. So it kind of makes one whole picture. And the process that I use specifically is called a Nelkin Wick. Um, it is a uh, traditional planning process, decision-making process that I use from where I'm from. Um, and it actually has a lot to do with a lot of kind of creation stories and kind of just um, uh, cultural stories from a lot of different nations that I've kind of come across. And I'm actually gonna go into it and cover it a little bit um, to kind of have the background and how I use it to do the work that I do. So I'm just gonna open the diagram. Actually, I'll open the diagram after this. Um, so the story begins long ago, uh, before people walked the earth, um, there were animal people, uh, animal people that took care of the lands um, and, and the ones that only walked the land. Um, one day there were four food chiefs the main four food chiefs that kind of did all the decisions and ruled their own um, respective parts. Um, Black Bear, who was chief of everything that walked on the land, everything that flew in the sky. There was Chief Spring Salmon, chief of everything that swam underwater and in the seas. There's Chief Bitterroot, chief of everything that grew under the ground and Chief um, Saskatoon Berry, chief of everything that grew above ground. And these were the four main food chiefs that kind of watched over the land and took care of it and made the decisions. And one day the four food chiefs were sitting and they were called to by the creator. And the creator came down to the four food chiefs and he said, I'm going to bring you a being. There's going to be a new being that I'm gonna bring. And it is your responsibility to take care of this being and to make sure it succeeds. And the creator put this being down in front of the four food chiefs and, and left. And he said, it's, it's, it's your responsibility now. And the four food chiefs looked at this being sitting in front of all four of them. And they looked at it and they said, this is one of the most pitiful beings I have ever seen. It has no teeth to eat. It has no fur to keep it warm. It has no claws to fight back or hunt. And it has nothing in its head. What are we supposed to do with this being? And all the, all the four food chiefs kind of sat and looked at it. And they finally decided to ask Chief Black Bear what they should do. And Chief Black Bear is one of the oldest beings um, and, and has the most lived experiences. And that's one of the one of the first lessons or teachings that I've been kind of been taught is whenever it comes to making a really hard decision, or if it comes to making a um, or needing guidance, always going to our elders have that are longest and have had the most experience. And that's what the other chiefs did was ask Chief Black Bear, and he sat there and he thought. And he, he thought about it really hard on, on, on how to take care of this being. And, and finally he said, I'm gonna lay my life down for this being. And this being can have everything that I am to, to live, to move on. It can have my fur to keep itself warm. It can have my meat to eat. It can have my teeth. It can have everything 
of me to sh to ensure this this being lives and succeeds in life. And he looked at the other food chiefs and he said, but when I do that, all of you need to sing me back to life. You need to sing your songs to bring me back to life too, so we can repeat the cycle to ensure that this being can live. And all the four, the other three food chiefs agreed. So Chief Black Bear laid down his life. And after a little while, the other three chiefs began to sing their songs to bring Chief Black Bear to life. But he didn't come back to life. So the other three food chiefs said that we need the songs of the other people to bring to bring them back. So the other chiefs called out to all the other animal people, you know, owl, muskrat, beaver, um, coyote. They all came, all the animal people came and they began to sing their song in hopes that it would bring Chief Black Bear to life. And he still wouldn't. And one of the last beings started to come down saying, let me sing my song, let me sing my song, buzzing and pestering and getting swatted away by the rest of the animal people. Um, and, and all they said was, get out of here. All you do is eat crap and bug people. Get out of here. You, your, your song won't do anything. And it was Fly. But finally, Fly was able to fly around get around the other animal people and land on Chief Black Bear's ear. And then Fly sang their song. And it wasn't until every single song, every single voice was heard by Chief Black Bear until Chief Black Bear came back to life. And it wasn't until that final voice was heard by Chief Black Bear for him to come back to life. And that's kind of one of the biggest teachings and one of the biggest stories and one of the one of the main tools that I use for the work that I do is that nothing is complete until you have every single voice, every single perspective um, to make a whole picture. And fly kind of represents, you know, if you walk into a band meeting, a community meeting, there's always that one person that walks in you're like oh my god this person is going to talk about the same thing that they always talk about they're going to talk about 15 years ago and what should have happened and what happened and what's still happening and they're just going to delay the meeting because it's the same story over and over again fly represents the people stuck in addiction stuck on the streets the people's voices that aren't always heard um and and but but they're just as powerful as the chief's voice, they still need that voice. You still need that perspective to make informed decisions and to have every single. And, and, a, and a specific kind of way of being and acting. And I have a diagram here I'm going to show that I'll kind of talk about it a little bit more. Can everyone see? So um, this is a diagram of kind of broken it down a little bit more, taken out a lot of kind of the um, traditional wording and uh, kind of try to make it a little bit more um, broad for, for other people to use. And that's another thing I wanted to touch note on as well. Um, it was always taught to me that stories and, and teachings are never meant to be not shared they're always meant to be to be shared with everybody um, this is a traditional practice by by us by by silk by okanagan but it is very similar to like a lot of other stories i've heard at a lot of other places a lot of other creation stories a lot of other traditional stories um, so you, everyone has full permission to use this story to use this way of working of being um, but to kind of go into it a little bit more, you see on this chart, there are four perspective types. There's tradition, relationship, innovation, and action. The tradition perspective is represented, of course, by Chief Black Bear. Um, you know, they're, they're very, they're, they're storytellers. They like to 
um, they they are those people that go into a meeting or or it, the story just kind of leads on or um, they it, it drifts from one subject to a different story. Uh, you know, they're the knowledge keepers, the language speakers. They like to share their knowledge with the next generation. And um, for for anyone a little bit more in 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 a Western sense, uh, you know, corporate memory, you know, very very keeps that. Um, but that is that is one of the biggest um, ways that we still learn to this day is is through that traditional perspective, through storytelling, through 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 like oral teachings. And then you also have the relationship perspective. You know, these are the people that don't want to leave anybody behind. You know, yeah, they want to include everybody. Uh, they don't leave anyone behind. They will take the time we need to. So, you know, they don't want to rush. They don't want to rush anybody. They want to, they want to make sure everyone says what they need to say. Uh, they like to hear everyone's thoughts. You know, they're very relationship-based thinkers. They, they really like um, to make sure no one's left. You also have the action-based perspective. Um, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Relation, uh, the relationship perspective is uh, represented by Chief Bitterroot. Chief Bitterroot represents the relationship. Um, and for action, action is represented by spring salmon. You know, Chief Spring Salmon is always going up the current, always fighting the current, trying to make it back home. Um, but how the action perspective is represented is, you know, we've been talking about this for too long. We need to see action, you know. Um, tradition and action don't really, don't really get along all that well. They butt heads a lot. You know, there's the people that want to tell stories and the action people don't want to kind of sit there and listen to the stories. They just want to do the work. They just want to hit the ground running, um, you know, get to the point. How will we implement this? OK, cool. We have something that we want to do. Now let's put it into let's implement it. Let's physically do it, not put it in the document and action people. You know, they can do a lot of kind of quick start projects for CCPs. You can get them involved in a lot of the 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 things that you can do really quick you know road maintenance you know um, community like lots of potholes you know something small but feasible that can be done quick those are the types of people you want for that uh, and lastly innovation and innovation is represented by chief saskatoon berry um, you know they like to think outside the box um, they're they're not very um you know they're they're they're, they're kind of more visionaries, kind of more broad thinkers. Uh, they look at systems um, to improve or change them. You know, um, something here is not working and it's very clearly not working. What can we do to, to improve this process? Uh, yeah, they're visionaries. They ask a lot of questions and um, being questioned by an innovation type perspective or, or um, kind of, uh, um, a thinker is when is when these people ask a lot of questions. You could feel interrogated. You could feel kind of badgered for information. Um, but what this person is doing is they're not they're not badgering you. They're not they're not um, they're not being rude by asking a lot of things. Um, they're trying to gather as much information as they can to make the most um, logical decision in their mind. Um, they need a lot of information. They need all the information. And that's a part of asking a lot of questions is they need um, as much information they can to make the best decision. And they need time to think. Um, <clears throat> this is why I use Miro. This is why I use a lot of different ways of um, gathering information because uh, for the most part, you won't gather it all in one session. Um, innovation perspectives need time to think. They need time to process the information that they heard at this session. And for the most part, they won't be able to give their input during that session. Um, so that's why I like to use Miro. Um, and all these different perspective groups, you know, they all represent the nested system of the community. They all represent, they're all the individual surrounded by family and the community. And lastly, the land. And they all take care of each other. And that's kind of how a lot of indigenous communities function is in this nested system. You're always surrounded by your family and community 
And lastly, the land is the biggest thing that we need to take care of and takes care of us. So when I do um, presentations and when I do workshops, I always do um, kind of one main question. Um, for instance, what would I like to see or what would you like to see in your community? And then going into breakout groups and breaking um, and, and having four specific breakout rooms for everybody to join. And they're labeled in those four perspective type groups. So you have the tradition room, you have the action room, relationship and innovation. And you put everyone into those rooms to, to work together. Um, and generally it runs really smooth. You know, you have like-minded individuals covering a topic um, and, and working on this issue together. You know, there's no butting heads, no, no, no clashing perspectives, you know, arguing or anything like that. For the most part, everyone will get along and, and, and do the work a lot quicker than you would in, in kind of a huge, uh, huge session. Um, but at the end, you have four different perspectives answering the same question. And um, you kind of get the whole picture. You don't get one, one perspective answering it from their way. You have four perspectives answering it and making one full image. As many points of view as you can to answer one question. Um, and that's, that's kind of how I do every facilitation I do if it's just me. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I like to do. Um, but after this story, I always like to open it up for specific questions. Uh, okay, let's see, I got a couple here uh, from Laura. Hello, Kyle, any chance this would be available to share in case anyone is interested? Yes, I will post it in the chat for download. I will post this, uh, this image. Um, these colors chosen, are they also correlating with the Hogwarts houses? <laughs> uh, no, they're not. Um, I don't know where the colors came from. Um, now that I look at it, I, I, I could see it now. <laughs> I, did, I didn't design it. Um, we, we had someone in their company do it. So, but it, it makes sense now. And they kind of do make sense when I look at them. So um, here, one second. I'm just gonna get this image that I can share for all of you. Perfect. There we go. I dropped that image in the chat for anyone that would like to download it, keep it, share it, use it. Um, it's public information. Um, any of the work that we do, we never own it. It's always public information for, for anyone. Um, but yeah, so I wanna, any any specific questions anyone wants to know? Any, any um, yeah, any questions? I'll open it up for questions now before I start doing a quick wrap up. Laura. Yeah, there we go. Hello, thank you so much. Um, I am the note taker as well. I'm also a UBC student in the Indigenous Community Planning Program and doing my practicum this year with Hamalco First Nation. And um, uh, I am curious, um, you have some really great um, tools that you shared and, and different um, online engagement platforms to use. One thing I was curious of is, which is an ongoing thing of um, managing people with different um, technology uh, that they have access to. And some of them I couldn't help but think of if someone has an an iPad or is using their iPhone to tune in um, and being mindful of, I saw the duck race and I thought that was awesome. Um, but then I, you know, there's always in my mind, I'd be, I guess, a little bit um, nervous to do something. And if someone can't participate, maybe they feel a little bad. So just wondering how you manage that throughout your engagement sessions. Thanks. Yeah, so with that, that's, um, I'm glad you brought that up because I totally wouldn't have covered that. Um, yeah, so working with with people with um, 
technical issues or not having the capabilities of, of having a computer or a laptop or even um, a good enough smartphone is um, especially elders, you know, elders are kind of always left out of, of out of these virtual engagements. Um, one thing we have been doing, and it's it's really specific from community to community on, on if you have um, a person in community that's able to kind of um, help uh, if you have a community champion um, that you're able to work with. Even a lot of youth, if you if you have the budget to do honorariums, um, to um, actually have youth go to elders' homes to help them with these technical issues. We've done that with a few communities and it's actually worked out quite a bit. Um, you, you don't have a lot, you have maybe like two dedicated youth that'll actually, that'll actually go help these elders. Um, some places will open up a health room for elders to go and only elders. Um, a lot of communities have elders buildings or, um, or areas for them to go. So even if you have one kind of central place for all the elders to go to participate together, that would help. The only issue with that is getting um, getting a volunteer to, um, to, to help you with that in community. Um, but if you have the budget for honorarium, um, that is one of the best ways to do it. Um, I am working with uh, a community that actually, um, because of COVID, because of not uh, having rental space, because you're not having to pay for rental space or anything like that, um, a portion of the budget actually went to ordering um, like mid-grade tablets to, to um, actually have as a library inventory for community members. Um, so they would be mainly used for online community meetings. And that's where um, the youth actually are able to help the elders. So they're actually using the rented or bought tablets, bringing them to elders and setting them up on these meetings. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And I have another question in the chat. Any tips on how to encourage community to join Zooms? There's a lot of Zoom fatigue out there these days. I definitely do agree. <laughs> um, you know, everyone's kind of tired. Everyone, I, I am even, um, especially if this is all you do for work or if you work from home, sitting in front of computers for all day, every day is very draining. That's why I try to make them as engaging as different as I can <laughs> each time because it is, it is get boring watching kind of the same thing, but it's, it's um, always giving incentive, um, always giving door prizes, always making sure something's done. Um, you know, if you're in an urban setting, um, you know, getting skip the dishes for door prizes is, is a good thing to do. Um, but just door prizes in general, since it's all online, you can do virtual gift cards, virtual codes. It opens, it opens the doors a lot for a lot of different types of ways to get people um, encouraged to come. Um, but other than that, um, making it as kind of fluid as you can, having a really good agenda um, and having, having presentations. Um, but also, you know, live streaming, making it different, trying to make it not just a meeting, trying to make it a little bit more uh, theatrical, a little bit more engaging for everybody. Um, but but on that same note, it's also um, I, you. I do understand the Zoom fatigue thing. But uh, yeah, door prizes always community. You know, we uh, we love we love door prizes. <laughs> Um, one last thing I want to cover really quick is, uh, oh, got another one from Bob. As we slowly move toward holding in-person meetings, hopefully, uh, what has been your experience in Zooming in person meetings for those who can't attend in person? Um, yeah, it makes, it does make things a little bit more difficult, I'd say. Um, it, it does impact the person zooming in. I have done a few 
in-person sessions um, lately where we've had a few people zoom in. Um, it, uh, it's just being really aware of the, of, of the people zooming in, really trying to monitor the chat. If you can have someone help you out with that in person, um, it's not, it's not terrible, um, but uh, you do have to just kind of be a lot more mindful of, of, of making sure the people on the computer can hear you um, and things like that. So, um, but that is the nice thing that Zoom has done is being able to bring people in that wouldn't be able to join in person. Um, another thing to do when you're doing in person are Zoom sessions is I like to do um, slides. I like to do uh, kind of during wellness breaks, you know, uh, coffee breaks. I like to put up a slideshow that kind of rotates through um, the agenda, the perspectives, how long the break is and what time we need to come back um, for that. So I am actually, can I do it? So, yes. So I'm gonna, so what I like to do, it's super simple, super easy. I do it on a lot of them is just doing something easy as this saying, okay, we're gonna go on break 10 minutes. We'll come back at 10 40. Um, I also like to play music in the background, very similar to what they're doing here. Um, just just kind of makes it a lot more clean um, and, and a little bit more professional. So I have the slides, I have the perspectives in there because normally before most sessions during break, I let people pick their perspective type groups. And then after the break, they'll be able to pick which room they wanna go in. Um, also have any scenarios that you may be covering after that so they can read up for it uh, if they don't have those documents. Uh, so, Angela, uh, do you use the polling function or is there something better? So, um, I occasionally use the polling feature. Um, I don't use it a lot. Um, you can use it as an icebreaker. I that's the only real time I use it as an icebreaker, um, and it was mainly when kind of COVID first started. What it would be asking, um, how familiar are you with Zoom? Not not very 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 into Zoom. Um, you know, might be cool to have like a little bit of um, uh, other questions, like if you're if you're. Um, doing kind of like dot mockers, dot mock, dot mockery type uh, thing, or having votes like that, um, you can use it. But I don't use the polling too much. Um, another thing that you can use are Google Forms. Um, that's another thing that I use a lot is Google Forms. Um, there you can do voting and and things like that in there as well. Um, and last question from Sunshine: uh, What if you're on a call with different time zones? Um, I am on a lot of calls with different time zones. Um, they're, it's not too bad. All of them are in Canada. I did have to do one session probably in spring, uh, where I was hosting a session in Newfoundland at 9am their time. So I was up here at 4am in uh, BC time. Uh, so it's, it's just kind of working with whoever you, uh, um, trying to make it as, as best as you can, um, you know, they were wanting to host it at 7 a.m., but I told them no. <laughs> uh, but it's it's not too bad. Setting the Zoom links is, um, so say if you're doing a session for someone in Alberta, you know, when you set the Zoom link, set it to the Alberta time zone um, and then put it in your, um, put it in your own personal calendar for yours. Uh, but yeah, time zones haven't had that much of an issue other than with people just misreading it and coming at the wrong time. Well, um, like that, um, that po like post you put up, if yeah. you see someone be back at this time, but they're in a different time oh, zone. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for that, it's just um, clarifying, just kind of asking, um, hey, is there anyone? For the most part, you'll know if, if someone's joining from, from outside your time zone, they'll usually make that known. Um, but yeah, just make, being, being a, just, being aware if you do have anyone from outside the time zone and just letting them know that uh, the time in the 
and the slide is different than um, from theirs. Okay. Yeah. Um, but awesome. Other than that, um, that's really all um, all I had to cover today. I hope there were some tools, some some information that you might have gotten out of this that you can use moving forward. I like to make it very informal, very chill when I do these types of sessions. Um, I'm not doing a huge presentation. I'm just kind of teaching you all. We're all we're all doing the same work. We're all going forward in the same position. Um, uh, I'm not trying to gather in for any information or anything. So yeah. Um, other than that, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you to my supports. Thank you to my note taker. Thank you to my tech host. Thank you to our interpreters here today. Um, but other than that, uh, we'll we'll end an hour or not an hour, a minute early. <laughs> so um, enjoy the rest of the CCP workshop. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to be here for the rest of the session, but I've been here every other year before that, and it's amazing the people you meet, the connections you make. It's 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 definitely a great time. So um, hope everyone enjoyed. Um, take those diagrams if you want. If you ever want any kind of information going forward. Um, you can always email me at kyle at kylealec.com. So perfect. Thanks, everybody.